likes it. Good morning. And welcome to our annual Cam Sunday celebration. This is um, always a delight, and I like always to ask, how many of you have been at camp, have attended day camp, Bible school, any, any place? Just raise your hands. Yep, this is a good number, so... Um, I like you to, in your mind, as you celebrate with us this worship, I like you to go back to one of those fond Bible camp memories that you um, were blessed with. And just rest in that thought and see that through all those years, it's still with you. Um, that's what, what we are about. That's what the Ministry of Lutherans Outdoors in South Dakota, of which you are an owner, um, is all about, is making those connections in your faith to deepen your relationship with God, to create lifelong friendships, and to just be in the presence of God. Um, and for that reason, we'll be hearing from several campers. We also have um, Jake and Lakin here from uh, Nisodak, one of the camps. Somebody said, I get them all mixed up, so now let's see if I, I get it all together. Let's start in the northeast corner. So there is Joy Ranch by Watertown, and then there is Nisodak. Then you move this Joy Ranch, and then there's Nisodak. Of course, you need to look at the right northeast. And then there is a Klein Ranch, and then there is um, Outlaw in Custer and the beautiful Black Hills. So um, we have campers that have been everywhere. I think we don't have a representative from Klein Ranch this morning, but other than that, we um, hear wonderful stories um, from campers, so thank you for sharing those. We also um, welcome all of you who join us via YouTube and uh, via your um, television that you can worship with us also. If you're a guest this morning, we invite you to please fill out a visitor card and drop it in the plate. That would be greatly appreciated so that we can um, get in touch with you. At this time, I invite, oh, 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 and then we have the baptism. We have Arya's baptism this morning to welcome her into the big family of God. How can I forget about that? That is just fun, and um, we always love to celebrate another new member in God's family. At this time, please stand as we join in confessing our sins and receiving um, God's forgiveness on page 5 in your celebration books. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God of glory, God of peace, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, and everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away, and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's people share God's peace.
I invite you to be seated for the call to worship. As we celebrate KM Sunday, we have a very visual call to worship, and my acolytes, who do more than just light candles, are actually going to be worship assistants in this one. As we welcome you to camp as a space to learn and grow. You may bring that forward now. Right there. A space to try new things. A space to connect with God. A space to pass on our story. A space to feel part of nature. A space to forgive and forget. A space to be still and to listen. And a space to be welcome just as we are. And as we just greeted each other, just have that greeting ring in your hearts. At this time, I invite you to stand as we, cry, as we sing Cry of My Heart, number 158. As we cry. Too much crying in my life sometimes. 158. a prayer of thanksgiving for all of the blessings revealed to us through Lutheran Outdoors in South Dakota. For the gifts of your good creation which we encounter when we are camping. For the forests and fields, beaches, streams and lakes, sunrises and sunsets, wind and rain. For your gift of time in the cycle of nature, for opportunities in the out of doors to reflect and to feel your presence very near to us, for rest and recreation. We give you thanks, God. For the dedication of countless people who have supported this ministry through offerings of time and talent, for builders, counselors, and instructors, for the gift of all 
who create and maintain an environment of, of faithfulness and healing through their example at camp. For the blessings you make known to us to those who participate at camp. For the questions and discoveries. For the friendships and fun. For the music and stories, we give you thanks, O oh God. You may be seated. At this time, I will invite you all to join me on page 227 and Arya's family to, and sponsors to come up right here to gather around the front. up there is in there yep it is please join me on 227 in the front portion of your books God who is rich in mercy and love gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism by water and the word God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ we are united with all the baptized into the one body of Christ anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. At this time, as sponsors, I invite you to insert her name right there and then present her for baptism, please. Now, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, I ask you as parents, do you desire to have Arya baptized into Christ? Then please answer with, I do. And God extends an invitation to you, and that invitation sounds something like this. To live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that Arya may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. And therefore, I ask you as parents, do you promise to help Arya grow in the Christian faith and life? Then please answer with, I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Arya in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Then please answer with, I do. People of God that are gathered here this morning, do you promise on behalf of the people of God to support Arya and her family and pray for them in their life in Christ? Then please answer with, we do. At this time, I invite you to stand, and I have three questions for the group that is gathered right in front of me. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Now, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Then please answer with, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Then please answer with, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Then please answer with, I renounce them. People of God, do you believe in God the Father? 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the Communion of Saints, the Resurrection of the Body, and the Life of Christ. You may be seated. Not you yet. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit, and by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, are you ready? We'll see. There we go. (laughs) You, You know what? Let her play with the water. It's okay. It's fun. Here. Is that fun? She says, yeah, I'll help you. How's that? All right, Arya, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, three in one. How's that? (laughs) She is just too funny. (laughs) You, I bet you grow up to be a pastor. I promise you. You make a good one, and the water is just fun. It's okay. She can play with it. We're not worried. We can get more where that came from. This is just great. If I wouldn't believe in only one baptism, I would do this over every week. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Arya with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. I'll give this right to you, Lucas. Arya, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Here's what Jesus says. Look what I have. Ooh, should we light it up? I'm not going to give it to you. I know better. They were all, (gasps) no, I don't. I'll give it to you. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome Arya, the newly baptized, into the family of God. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Yes, you may clap. She is a trooper. Now this beautiful white cloud that's here after service you can take with as uh, memorabilia. We have all those fun documents that I bet you're just burning up to have. There is a baptismal medallion. It looks like that is another hand. And your receiving blanket. Look at that. Don't, is it not good? She says, well, kind of. It's to remind you that God will love you forever and ever, and he will always have his arms around you. Yes, that is very exciting. So how about you come with me, and I'll trade the blanket 
and I'll bring her back, I promise. Yeah, I'm not mom, I know, I know. I you may be seated and I think At we sing. At this point, uh, we are going to sing Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, you may the Potter's Hand, number 154. That's the offering song, 154. God loves them no matter what. That was a theme, right? And this year, I think, um, our campus learned that we live in this world, but we are of this world. We live in this world, but we are of this world. So it says in Romans 12, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. You're going to have special music. Yeah, the Covenant Choir is going to come up, and I'd like you to have a good look at it, um, because if you have a child in that age, it would be um, a gift to have them join this choir. They meet on Wednesday. 
Um, and they have a, a great time not just singing but enjoying each other's fellowship under the direction of Mary Hunter. So thank you. And you learn so much more than singing. Yes, you may be seated right there. At this time, we sing Jesus Loves Me as the children are coming forward. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the... tells me so. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. All right. 
I am going to ask you a question. How many languages did the choir use to sing What a Friend We Have on Jesus? Two or three? Three. All right, can you tell me what languages we heard and saw? Well, what's the first one? What a friend we have in Jesus. English. What was the second language? Zuahili. Where do people speak Zuahilian? Zuahili? Zuahili? Where do people speak Zuahili? In Minnesota. Where do they speak? You had your hands up first. In Africa. Okay. Now, yes, in Africa, that's right. Is that close by where you live or far away? Far away. That's right. Now, what was the third language that we saw? Dylan. Sign language. And I like us to learn that sign language. Emma, sit down. You gonna sit or you gonna go? Oh, I gotta learn it the hard way, no exceptions. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, there's Julie, because I know nothing about sign. Is there signing for crying? Oh. Yeah, I told you I need to borrow her sometime. All right, here we go. Julie is going to teach you something. You can't help. There we go. Now, at Bible Camp, thank you, Julie. At Bible Camp, what do you think you learn there when you go to Bible school or Bible Camp? All right, thank you for visiting. <laughs> Come again sometime. All right, what do you learn at Bible Camp, you think, and at day camp? You learn singing. Do you think you'll learn what a friend you have in Jesus? Probably not that hymn, but do you learn that that is true, that Jesus is our friend? Yes, you learn that through singing. You learn that through what else? What else? Who is here that went to Bible camp or day camp? Okay, so you learn what a friend you have in Jesus through singing. What else? What else do you do at Bible camp? You worship. Anyone else? You? Arts and crafts? You sing a lot, okay? So you, what else? Games. So there's lots of ways we learn that Jesus is our friend through the Bible. Very good. I'm so glad that at Bible camp they actually open a Bible. Yes, yes for Bible camps. And then you got to just keep it and don't tell anybody about it. Is that how it goes? No, you are going to tell everyone that they also can have a friend in Jesus. That is very important to remember. And in a little bit, we'll hear more stories about what a friend we have in Jesus. Do you remember how it went now? Let me think. For what a friend... Jesus have and Jesus all right foreign languages all hard to learn aren't they but it's all worth it because we make new friends in foreign languages and it's good for our brains all right let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for the gift of Bible camps day camps people who volunteer at camp who go to camp for campers for just the great outdoors and we ask that your Holy Spirit come in our hearts 
to dwell in us and to share the story that we do have a friend in Jesus. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, my friends. You may be seated back on the other side. And that was a great song. It made me almost jump up and dance. Almost. And then I remembered, we don't really do that. We um, are, oh, there we go. They'll find their way. This is the time where we share the camp um, stories. And I have invited, actually, folks that have attended camp in several occasions and various um, camps to come and share just a little bit. Um, we, we actually live very close to camp in our first call. We lived in Wabe. We started our ministry there. And um, I learned it's only seven miles away from Wabe, Bible, uh, Nisudek Bible Camp. It felt like it was 14 still insist it felt like it was 14 but it's only seven and it was a great place to get away um, from the daily um, walks of ministry and to just be in the presence of God with um, like-minded folks it was a great place so we invited um, a couple campers that um, Julie and Elia spent some time up there so they'll be talking to us and then we, as you learned, we have camp on the other side of our beautiful state in the beautiful Black Hills. And Dylan went there with the whole group, yes, and he had a great time there. And I invited his mom to come also because I know Stacy um, has been growing up at Outlaw, kind of, more or less, spent a lot of time there. And so they'll be speaking. And then I have a friend that I invited that many of you know um, because she... It's kind of a daughter of this congregation. Nadine Moore came back. Um, she is actually, she would be or is in Paul and Lyman's great. Um, she, her and Paul went to Bible camp. I don't remember. I, I think we moved here in fifth grade. I think they started going to Bible camp together. And Nadine since then has developed this deep relationship and love for camp. So I wanted her to come back and just share about this and her experience um, on on how you cannot be done with camp after you are done um, and can return for different and special purposes. And then, of course, we have Jake and Lakin here as um, our representatives from Lutherans Outdoors in South Dakota to share with us um, about this wonderful ministry. But we'll have Aliyah and Julie go first. We attended our second year of Camp 123, and it is an awesome experience. Did you think it was awesome, Aaliyah? Yeah. Is it okay to go to camp with your mom? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As an adult, I was at first thinking, okay, well, I remember camp as being a blast, but uh, revisiting how is it going to be and, and what, what is it for her? And what it does is, let's see, what do we get to do there, Aaliyah? Um, well... A lot of times, um, we, um, in the cabin, usually at rest time, first of all, we do our Bible study. And that's like a lot of fun because you get to hang out with your friends in the cabin and with your counselor, and it's just a lot of fun. Um, do you do anything besides just stick around in the cabin? No. Um, you play games outside, and... Um, it's a lot of fun because you get to meet all the kids who are at camp and it's just... Did you, did you see anybody this year that we saw last year? My friend Murphy, um, I don't get to see her a lot, but yeah. So part of camp as a grown-up was, I remember as a child making friends and seeing them from summer to summer. And being in Camp 123, it's kind of like the starting point. Um, I would completely encourage anyone to do it with your child. You get to uh, not only establish a relationship with your child in a different outside of the house setting, you also get to meet other fellow moms, dads, campers, and get to have a fellowship with them, as we also have Bible study with our adult group while they're doing something else. And uh, let's see, what else can we think? There's an early morning thing that the first year we kind of struggled with. What was that? 
I think it was a polar bra plunge and the um, polar plunge. And the, yeah, the road runner. What does that mean? Um, so the polar plunge is where everybody gets together um, and you um, um, you get to eat ice cream then when you have polar plunge. What is a polar plunge? Why is it polar plunge? Plunge. Um, because you have to jump into the water and it's usually cold in the morning, so <laughs> it's freezing. <laughs> and the road runner is just where you have this early morning run where it's like a mile, maybe a half a mile. I think it's a half a mile. Yeah, it's a half a mile and it's a lot of fun. But yeah, you have to run to the end and then run back. Okay. Well, our experience has been good, right? Mm-hmm. And are we going to go back again next year? Yes. Do you think they should go? Yes. Yes. It is a good time of fellowship, fun. You eat together, you sleep together, you get to sing together and have devotions. It's just a really wonderful spirit of uh, like-minded people getting together and sharing their faith. So, and you get to do it with your buddy. All right. That's Thank our you. Camp one, two, three. I am Dylan Riedel, and um, this summer I went to Outlaw Ranch. Just like last year, um, I missed out on a lot. Last year, we got a new cement porch in, and I missed the entire construction of it. And this year, my mom and Tyson went and saw Finding Dory, and I did not. But so, what were you busy doing? But at camp, I, I'm pretty sure I was having more fun them, than them. but. Um, we always had very fun activities, and for me, um, Outlaw Ranch was perfect because it's the best way that I am able to personally find a connection with God, and just being out in nature is so peaceful, and especially just here in South Dakota where we live and we know that our family will be there if we ever get hurt. And one of my favorite things at camp was near the end of the year, um, we played a pretty, pretty fun game. Um, it was, I'm pretty sure it was called Rainbow, where we had to go all around, get all the colors, and then most of the counselors had squirt guns. If you got squirt, the counselors would sometimes be nice and not erase any of your colors or they might erase one or if they're if they're going to be mean then they would erase all of them and the best part about that game was right at the end i had all my colors and i didn't even get shot but then one of the counselors said i did but i didn't get wet at all <laughs> and then all my colors erased Right before I was going to end and get to the finish while winning. And then I started all over and the time went up before I was able to do it. But anyways, um, at Outlaw they have tons of very nice food every, every, every day. I don't know. <laughs> um, and just everybody there is very nice and you can know that there are counselors that will be able to help you anywhere and any time. And also every, every year you get a bracelet. I'm not wearing mine, sadly, um, but mom has hers. That, that's a bonus. She'll talk about that more probably. <laughs> Um, but I think I have to hand it over to her now. Okay, stay here with me. Okay, so Dylan went to Outlaw for his second year in a row, and he's kind of brave, braver than I would be, because he was the only boy with a whole bunch of girls going. 
twice. Two years in a row. And he, therefore, didn't know anybody in his cabin and had to meet all new friends. And I don't know that I ever would have been able to do that at nine or ten years old, but he did. And he was welcomed by the counselors and the other kids at camp. And it's just, as a parent, you know that they'll be okay. They will find friends. They will have lots of guidance from adults and, you know, just feel the love of God the whole week. Like he said, at Outlaw Ranch, there's lots of beauty, and it's easy to feel close to God in a setting like that. I was a camper there once. I went to all of the camps. I'm a camper for life, I guess. It was every summer, the highlight of my summer. Um, but Outlaw was my favorite place, and so I chose to be a counselor there for two years when I was in college. I would recommend that to anybody who wants to share God's love with kids and also at Outlaw with families because they have family camp there too. Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, but adding on to what she said, um, last, well, the first year, of course, she said that, yes, I had to meet all new friends. But then this year, I did have one person from my cabin last year, and so that just made it ever so much easier to be able to um, fit in. Yeah. I would recommend um, kids to invite friends, maybe that don't even go to church here, somebody who they feel could use a little God in their life. Invite a friend to come along. It's interdenominational. Um, and invite you as a congregation to come to soup suppers and support these campers who you know, maybe need a little bit of help to get there. It's a great way to financially give to help all these kids be able to go to camp each year. Um, so you can do that at soup suppers and other things through the year. Um, other things I just wanted to quick mention, um, it's fun to go to all the camps. So I recommend trying them all. We love Outlaw Ranch because we love the Black Hills and it's kind of a special place for our family. My dad even went to camp there. He still has his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bracelets that he got when he was a camper, as do I. Um, so it's special to our family. But Nisadak is great for young kids. It's great for people who love water and lake sports and things like that. Klein Ranch is wonderful if you love animals and horses. It's just wide open prairie, but there's even um, chances to hike. And when I was there, we intertubed down the river. Uh, there's lots of fun things. Outlaw Ranch is great for if you like to hike and just really be surrounded by beautiful, beautiful nature. I've never been to Joy Ranch, but I think that would be great for a grandparent to take a child, um, maybe a different child every time, to have that one-on-one -on -one time with a grandchild and that special memories. Lots of special memories you'll have in your heart forever. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, while Nadine makes her way up, um, the women of Trinity are invited to go to a women's retreat um, in November, so that will be held at Joy Ranch. Watch for the postcard and the mail, and then you can sign up and go to Joy Ranch. It'll be a great retreat. Good morning. I'm Nadine Moore. I'm a senior at Mitchell High School currently, and I have been going to camp since 2009. I started off going to Nisadak for two years, and I went to AMR for three, and Paul and I did that together. Um, let's see, Nisadak is a great starter camp for sure, like especially for younger kids, especially one, two, three camp, so your parent can go with you. Again, it's like great for water activities, outlaws great for hiking and horseback riding. Uh, the, these past two years, I've been a counselor in training at Outlaw Ranch which is a three-week program for kids that are done with their sophomore year and like just graduated to get experience through counseling by working side by side with the counselor working at the camp. And that's great because I feel a lot more prepared for when I decide to be a counselor myself in a couple years. Um, when Paul and I decided to go to church uh, AMR together in 2011, we chose a camp that was a little more, <laughs> a little more rustic. We chose a camp that didn't have running water or electricity. <laughs> And going to camp together for those three years that we did definitely strengthened our friendship and definitely our faith in Christ. And I have lifelong friendships with people I've met, and I still talk to them. Like even kids I've met my first year when I went to camp. It's amazing, like the friendships and 
everything that you gain from going to Lutheran Outdoors. Uh, financial uh, situations, there are camperships available. I know my family's used them. Um, working at Soup Suppers is a great way to make money so you can go to camp. I would highly suggest every kid at least try going to camp once. It's a wonderful experience. And I don't doubt that you'll regret it. That <laughs> you won't regret it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nadine. There we go. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jake. I'm the director at NISADAC. And I was trying to think of uh, my favorite camp story when I was growing up, um, and that was at Lake of the Woods Bible Camp in northern Minnesota on the Canadian border, and something that we did every night after campfire right on the river. So across the river was, uh, was Canada, and we'd line up on the banks of the river, and we'd shout, Good night, Canada, and God bless you, Canada. The residents across the river knew that we would do this, and so they would wait out there at night, and then they would flash lights and ring bells for us. It was pretty unique. And somehow that translated into me when I was eight years old, thinking that God lived in Canada. So <laughs> I quickly learned otherwise. I joined the, the Lutherans Outdoors crew about a year and a half ago, and there's something really unique about Lutherans Outdoors in South Dakota. I also serve on a committee um, with Lutheran Outdoor Ministries, and that's the cloud organization that kind of brings together all 146 camps um, across the nation. And part of my duties on that committee are to call camp directors and talk to them about how their summer has gone and, and what's the status of camp. And what I've found is that the power and, and the uniqueness of Lutherans Outdoors is pretty unique to this place. That's not the same as other camping organizations ac across different states. There's a huge support for what happens here in South Dakota. There's a huge, generous donor base and user base here in South Dakota. And there's just a really unique set of programs happening at all the different camps. And one thing that I think has been one of the most powerful experiences I've taken or been a part of in the last year is at our Synod Assembly when we were able to announce to the constituency that the organization is debt-free. And what that means to you guys here at Trinity Madison is that because the organization is debt-free, we can do things like build a new retreat center at Nisadak and build six more miles of trails at Outlaw Ranch and put the plans together to, to make more bunkhouses and more rooms at Joy Ranch. So there's, there's a unique, powerful ministry that happens at Lutheran's Outdoors. And one of the other things that I've noticed that in ELO is that there's integrity there. So that part of our mission statement, where all are welcome, we want to live that out. And so every year, we give away campership dollars so that anybody can come to camp, no matter where you come from, what your financial status might be, what's happening in your family's life right now. Last year alone, and, and Dirk might talk about this later, we gave away $100,000 in campership money. And most of that was given by donors who said, you know, we might not have somebody that uh, goes to camp anymore, might not be a student or, or a camper, but we still want to make sure that somebody can come to camp. And so there are resources available for you to come to camp because all are welcome. So I invite you guys to be a part of this this next year, this at a women's retreat next summer at Nisadak or Outlaw or Klein or Joy Ranch. And, um, and I'd love to give you more information about that, but thank you for letting us be here this morning and, and, and sharing about Lutherans Outdoors. Thank you so much. Well, um, if you put it all together, what did you learn? You should come, right? Come and see, it will change your life. And if you think, you just touched on that, if you think that you cannot afford it, I can reassure you I'm serving on the Endowment Fund Committee uh, for Lutheran Outdoors. We have the funds available to make sure that everyone is welcome and everyone can participate. And if you have, maybe you did, never did that, but I'd like also to encourage you to think about if you would pass away, right? What are you going to do with your assets? Um, Constant and I, we are part of the Lutheran Outdoors um, Heritage uh, Foundation. And um, 
What we did is, like many, many other families in South Dakota, we put Lutheran Outdoors into our last will. And that makes it possible that your children and your grandchildren will have the same experience. And I think for me, that's really important. That's how I experienced God in my life, in my daily life. Well, thank you. Let's rise and sing together number 81. You are present in the world and in our lives. Your activity and loving hand is made known to us through the beauty of creation and through the people around us. We actively share in you, rest with our thoughts and discover the spiritual benefits of silence, solitude, contemplation, and rest. In the faces of those around us, in the stillness of quiet moments, we celebrate your presence in the world. Cam provides time for us to just be, to listen and meet you in the struggles and joys of community. We eat, cook, and clean together, work, and learn together disagree and laugh together. We swim in lakes and seas, gather around fires, walk in woods and gaze at stars. In creation and community, we discover that you are a life-changing God. We are a ministry of the ELCA that touches the lives of thousands of children, teens, young adults, adults, and seniors every year. We meet you at camp, experience healthy community and deep and wholesome relationships. We receive from you a vision of Christian community to pursue and tools to assist us in becoming a part of a healthy community. As campers, we learn a lot while engaging in acts of service according to the gifts you have given us. We learn to care for creation in practical and sustainable ways. We 
We are committed to Christian education programming in an environment where your loving presence can be celebrated and shared. At camp, we receive not only the biblical story to inform our story, but also opportunities to put our faith into practice. At camp, we find concentrated and uninterrupted time together with mentors and counselors who can guide us in the process of growing in our relationship with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You should have received a regular postcard that was a maroon color on the front and invited you to the act of giving stewardship days. Um, that is the time that we set aside annually for three weeks to look at stewardship in, in a holistic kind of a way. This year you're invited to share in stories, stories such as Cinderella and Mr. Potato Head. And we'll have a big celebration on the 16th with the baked potato um, feed. Please come all and bring everyone. And for that reason, I need gourds. I need decorative gourds, and I need about 150 to 200. So if you are knowing anyone um, that can help us with that, that would be greatly appreciated. And we like you to be here for the next three weeks to participate in those wonderful faith stories and how they come alive as far as stewardship is concerned. At this time, please rise for our sending song. <laughs> 